very important topic and a very sensitive topic, which is when we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we're talking about when we're talking about the the impact of understanding who Allah is, the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the impact on a Muslim? But before we speak about the impact of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a Muslim, we first have to understand how did we get there? You know, without religion, without speaking about in the beginning, without speaking about Islam. So pretty much in a in a in a crude beginning, what do we what do we start out with? So man, in order to recognize who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, they first start out with recognizing themselves. As a child, when they grow, the first thing that they recognize is that I'm here. What am I doing here? They realize strengths. They realize weaknesses. And of course, they realize a very important thing that is a constant question coming into their hearts. Why am I here? Why is there death? By recognizing death and recognizing that there is there's a, a, a magnificent creation, that there, there was a creation that that is that is so fine-tuned, that is so fine-tuned that it is very impossible for it to actually put itself on its own. This very fine-tuned creation brings in the questions. Well, it isn't just a question of the world around you or yourself, but it's also recognizing this fine-tuned world. Is it? Is it God? This fine-tuned world, can it be God? It, can it be the creation? Can it be something that created itself? So man starts to question. We'll start realizing, and we even see that historically, how man started using different things that they had found around the world, even though, indeed, in Islam, we would recognize that Tawheed was in the beginning, but then, then, people started finding or making up ways in order to get close to God Almighty by making materialistic things, which they had attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, when we look at the world around us, although many generations after Prophet Adam alayhi salam were actually worshiping different things that they had found in the world that they found strength in. The sun, different things in nature, wind, rain, anything that they had thought actually is probably what is behind creation. Now, man understood who he was, understood that there is something inside, but and couldn't really always figure out or probably lost the connection to knowing what it is. Realized that things still perish. Things, in order for something to be God, it must not perish. Why must it not perish? Because the second it perishes, it would actually mean it did not give itself life. If it didn't give itself life, it for sure can't give others life. When we look at the idea that it itself starts to lose energy, the sun, the moon, earth, Losing energy in what we know in physics, the, the laws of the thermodynamics, we could see that that means that that cannot necessarily be what brought life. If you want to study the physics of this, or at least the philosophy to be more accurate, I urge you to watch a lecture Although a person very Islamophobe, uh, very Islamophobic, but he had done a very good lecture on uh, on the evidences of the existence of God. You can type in on YouTube S U R G Frank Turek. I'm not going to give the lecture 
I'm not going to give the lecture on that, but it would be really good, especially, it's just half an hour, but especially for, for the students, especially for the young teenagers, or even if you want just a simple answer on how does science actually refute that God Almighty does not exist. But what we see, what we see in the world around us is actually the first the first start to knowing who God is. In where you look around you and you start questioning, well, something began before life. Something, why did it begin before life? Well, because there is a purpose to life. If there is a purpose to life, if the world is finely tuned, then for sure, for every single finely tuned creation, for every finely tuned engineered, engineered um, area, there is a reason for it. And you could see from the very simple start, your ears, they were created, all right, what purpose will they give hearing? The way that they are designed is to give hearing. The way that your eye is built is to give the ability to see. And the list goes on and on in the world around us in order to see that everything from the smallest to the very biggest that encompasses the hearing, the seeing, the earth, the sky, all the things around you are only created for a purpose. But the purpose precedes the creation, just as the purpose of your ear had preceded, had preceded in the way that it was designed was really hearing. Hearing was the the purpose. Therefore, in order to get to the purpose, your ear was designed in, in a sophisticated way to get to the purpose. Well, that isn't just from the small area, but that's also true when we're talking about life in every corner in life put together in where it is heading towards one corner. There is a purpose. Now, like we said, in order for something to be God, it has to have preceded life, and it can't be part of life. It can't be part of life because the purpose was created even before life. Life itself is a creature. Life itself is a creature, and everything on life is a creature. Therefore, it can't be life because life in itself was created for a purpose. But fast forward, what else? So number one is that we look at one of the names of our and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is il awwal. He is the beginning, nothing before him. The last and nothing after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we get from out? What do we get from that name and attribute? One, for you to know where you are on the dimension of history and the dimension, the dimension of the history and timing of life and the dimension of place. If you didn't know in terms of place where you are, do you really know where you're headed to? If you didn't know where you are, you won't be able to know where you're heading. If you don't know the timing that you are in, do you really know where you're going? What next in your life? Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had always told us the story of the beginning of creation. The story of the beginning of creation, whether we're talking about the galaxies, whether we're talking about Adam, whether we're talking about that, because the beginning is going to help you know the end. You can't know the future unless you know the past. 
This is something that we even see in physics. In order for me to know where, if I were to hit the ball, where it's going to reach, I must know the angle. I must know the momentum in order for me, or even the velocity, in order for me to expect and calculate where it's going to go. And that's the same thing. Knowing the different sides that relate to you, the velocity of your life, the momentum that you have, the momentum, the energy that you have, and also the angle in where the angle between you and the one that created the purpose of life. A different way of looking at it, but when we look at the world around us, we could see that the world is speaking to us to help us understand, well, the most important questions, who can, could be the God? In order for one to be God, well, there are certain things that we also have to have tools for us to recognize and consider, are these tools capable of telling me who God is. So the story Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us begins. The story begins when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling the angels at that moment, the angels did not, of course, have the intellect. At that moment, the angels were clueless when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that he was going to create another creature a creature, well, they had previous knowledge of another creature causing bloodshed. If it's bloodshed, well, surely it's not the jinn, but it's another one. That's another topic. But let Adam know. Adam is also you and I. I'm not saying that Adam السلام, is a mythical creature or a mythical uh, character, but this is also us here letting us know if it's talking about Adam, it's telling you also what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let Adam know of his strengths and weaknesses. The strength, taught Adam the names of things. The strength is intellect. You have the intellect that even the malaika don't have because the malaika themselves, they admitted they just said, All praise be to you. We don't know unless you teach us. But showed the malaika that this creature has the intellect to turn to me. But not necessarily is that enough. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells Adam, well, there are certain weaknesses. What is that weakness? Well, that weakness is basically a creature called Iblis who may use your intellect in a way to deceive and manipulate you to think your intellect is strong. In other words, your intellect is not necessarily the tool to trust fully as the tool for you to know your Lord Almighty. But there's another tool, and that tool, and that tool is basically in continuing the story where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually tells them that فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ That tool is basically the tool of wahi, the tool of guidance, a message from the Lord Almighty to help man know who their Lord is because their own tool of intellect may sometimes, may sometimes manipulate them. What is the tool? You've got another tool. And that tool is the tool of fitra. What is the tool of fitra? Well, the tool of fitra is basically the instinct. What does it mean, the instinct? The instinct means that you understand by knowing about yourself, that you understand who and why you were created, but you also, you also use that fitra often as a wake-up call to help you listen to yourself and listen 
to the nature around you that is speaking in the utmost strongest words. What is after life? Take a moment to think about what is after life. The silence that we could see in the dead is probably the loudest voice that man can hear. How can silence be loud? A very contradictory word, but in its, rea in its reality, it is very loud. When it's speaking, yet speaking only one word, but in silence. Speaking in silence, how could that be? Well, just the silence of death. The person was and is not anymore. The person was around us, but can't even speak, which is exactly what Qas ibn Sa'd al-Iyadi, one of those ahnaf that lived during the time of the Prophet Sallam, he was just trying to, actually before him, by just a little bit, he just, he just used to look around and just say, Ayyuhan nas, isma'u wa'u, O people, listen and comprehend. Comprehend what? And then he says, Comprehend the world around you. With what? Look at the world. Take a moment to reflect whoever lives. Whoever lives will die. We know that as a fact because we, could, we were able to see the pattern many, many, many times. And we could see that it's speaking. So let's comprehend deeply. Every single person that perishes, we had seen the pattern. They're gone. And when they're gone, they never come back. Because I could see that there's a pattern in where when they perish, for sure there was a purpose. One day, we could see that there are new people, new generations being born and dying. It continues in this cycle. But what is the purpose? The cycle of people dying, another creation coming in, and another generation. But what we could see is a pattern that lives around us. Well, let's look at the pattern. You could see that there is the dark night, Naharun Sej, bright daylight after night comes in the light. Wasama'un thatu abraj, and we could see in the skies that there is a pattern. The pattern in where we start out in a certain in a certain design in space in the skies that moves and it comes back. There's a pattern. That pattern is speaking to us that everything in the world follows a specific pattern and is not created in absurdity. And you could see those bright stars from the top of our heads bright stars and from the and you could see the the earth around us a very safe place for us to live on and very high mountains those high mountains you could see the highness and you could see the lowness of earth and you could see the very highness of stars up on your head but then he says, Ya ma'ashara iyad, ayna al-aba'a wal ajdad. This is his fitra speaking. This is now his instinct. He doesn't have a revelation. He was actually before the Prophet ﷺ, but he was speaking in his own instinct, in where he was talking to his, his tribe. Ya ma'ashara iyad, O people of iyad, ayna al-aba'a wal ajdad, where are our forefathers and our grandfathers? Wa ayna al-faraheena tashidad, and where are the pharaohs? 
the strong pharaohs, their civilization, the civilization that they had built with all the, the knowledge and all the tools and all the science, where did they go? That death, the death part was becoming the strongest sound that he was hearing by looking at the pattern. And then he would say, When we look at those that had passed before us, we could see some deep lessons and insight. When we would see death coming in from what source? We are totally unaware, totally blank to understand the source that made it happen. But then that silence is speaking in the loudest words, asking what is after life. Man feels the fitra, has the mind and the intellect. But then in order to know God Almighty, it's not enough to know mind, intellect, and in fitra, because science can only tell you, if we're talking about mind, can only tell you how things function, not why they function. Why? Well, because this is beyond nature. It's a metaphysical thing. Why the world was created the purpose of creation, you can't necessarily get to it by looking at how things function. All that you will get to by knowing how things function is that, that the world around you cannot be created but by a creator. Here's name number two. By a creator. So why can't the sun or the sky be a creator? Well, because they're creatures. A creature can't be a creator because in order for it to be a creator, it would need to be able to sustain its life and never perish. But just by the fact that it will perish is telling you that it cannot continue giving itself life. If it can't continue giving itself life, that means it, it did not originate life. It didn't originate life. And that is why we could see that are we able to know who God is just by looking at nature around us? No. The fitra itself cannot tell you what the, who God is or who uh, Allah is because the fitra is just going to ask you the questions, what is life? It will help you use it as a GPS to help you know where to get to. But that itself is not enough, which is why the previous nations, the previous nations, they got to the beginning of it previous nations, many of them, they got to the beginning that there is something behind this creation, but then their intellect easily manipulated them. They started worshiping creation itself, not knowing that it itself perishes, or at least if it depends on others, then it sustains to have founded itself, because if it founded others, then it would have created a way to sustain itself without depending on others. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually said, talks about the people that they would, that most people, what they depend on is speculation. And they would depend on their own, on their own inclinations, on their own pleasures. And their Lord Almighty had sent them guidance. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the, the lords that they had created, the gods that they had 
or the things that ha that they had attributed to having a divine a divine nature allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that well look at them they're just names that you yourself had created that you yourself had created in here they're just names that you had created, that you had invented. In the end, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even bring you any evidence or confirmation that this really is God. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that or in, 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 the, in the other ayah, um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that they use three different there are three different types of resources for knowledge yes one one it would be either wahi or it would be something that is dhan in other words speculation in other words theory slash science that is not factual the other part, which is that they will depend on, they will depend on pleasure, pleasure and their own, their own people in order to say that something is factual or not. And in that order, we could see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in order to know your Lord Almighty, you cannot use, man, you cannot use a manipulated evidence called theory or depend on that and you cannot use and and you cannot use just your own speculation of what it might look like and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in here illa asma'un samaytumuha antum wa abaukum ma anzal Allah biha min sultan iyattabi'una illa dhan wa ma tahwa al anfus wa laqad jahum min rabbihum al huda making it easy for you instead of taking all those philosophy classes and going in all those philosophy classes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it easy then in order for you to know God in order for you know to to know the world in order for you, for you to know the purpose of life that you need one very important tool. Make sure you don't depend on speculation or your own, your own inclinations. But in the end, but they got a revelation from their Lord Almighty. What is that revelation? The revelation the Prophet tells us about Ayat al Kursi. That ayat al Kursi acts as the most one of the most important ayat in order to explain to us, in order to explain to us about God and Allah Almighty. Allah here is the beginning. Allah. The word Allah means the God. The word ilah, a Semitic word that they were using and, and calling everything as well the answer to what is deserving worship, they would call it ilah. They would call it ilah to mean God, to mean a creator. They would call it ilah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now explaining to us this God, Allah, an explanation in order for you to know who God is La ilaha illahu, the beginning. Be mindful that there's no God but Him. No God but Him. Isn't that an oxymoron? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just telling you. La ilaha illahu, meaning I'm referring to Allah. La ilaha, meaning there's nothing else worthy of worship but the God. Allah, al hay al qayyum. You want to take a moment. You were able to see around you that there was something in the creation calling, that there is something behind creation. But you realize that the things around you were perishable. They could lose their energy. And that they were not necessarily before life. That they came later in life they were part of the whole creation called life 
So your Lord Almighty is beyond life. What is the evidence? He is al Hay. He is the one that is always living. In other words, the different things that you would see around you in creation, the different laws of physics that you see around you in creation, that things perish, that things have an age, that things, why do they have an age? Well, because they are creatures living within the creature called life. The different laws of physics that hold life together called time, called space, called place, called energy, all those different things that make up life and the different factors of, of making life are actually part of the creation. Therefore, they can't be creators. And here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hay. So how, how old is your Lord Almighty? Well, he's al-hay. Your Lord Almighty is beyond time. Therefore, he is al-hay. He is beyond time. Time is part of the dimension that is within the creation of life. How old is your Lord Almighty? He is Al-Hay. He never dies. Now you know that your Lord Almighty never perishes because his energy does not depend on others. Because his energy does not depend on others, he is Al-Qayyum. Now we go with that fluency. Because his energy does not depend on others, he is Al-Qayyum. He is self-sustained. He is self-sustained. He is Al-Qayyum. He is Al-Hay beyond creation, beyond the dimension of life in where it loses energy and it loses power. But your Lord Almighty is Al-Hay. He is the one that is ever living, eternal, Al-Qayyum, because he also never depends on others. His life is not dependent on others. Well, not only that, but He does not go in, into any type of weakness, sinna, not even the start of a sleep. and not even a full sleep. Lahu ma fi samawat wa ma fi well, your ownership is very limited. You may own something, but your ownership is very limited because you cannot even own its life and death. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, well, his ownership is actually beyond. His ownership is to the skies, is actually fully to him almighty. The ownership on earth is fully to him almighty. Well, this is not only the ownership, but this is that the Lord Almighty encompasses everything. That the Lord Almighty, everything is within his control. You, son of Adam, have a very limited control over things. Meaning what? You can't even control fully your life and death. Therefore, your weakness is now transparent to you. It is so clear to you that even your life and death you don't control. Your health and your your health and your illness and your cure you don't control. Man, you are weak. Therefore, your life and death, there's someone else that controls it. Who can intercede? In other words, the second that you go into worship. So here in Islam, you're, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, well, if you know who your Lord is now, which is that rububiya, which is now knowing who the Rabb is. What is Rabb? Rabb is Lord. Now it is time to understand that the things around you, in order for you to get to the point of worship, the second step, 
take a moment to question yourself. Who is capable of interceding to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without him giving him the permission to do so? During that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that if you would want to consider X or Y or Z, the dead, the, those, those um, creatures, the different things that they are our path, they are our Lord, they can be those connections between us and God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, nobody can intercede to the Lord Almighty unless he gives them the permission to do so. Well, the Lord Almighty يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Well, for the Lord, not only is He, not only is He ever living and sustaining Himself, but He also has the full knowledge that encompasses your past and your future. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ Your future. وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ And the things that pass. In other words, how is it that God Almighty knows the past and the future? Because time does not encompass God Almighty. Time does not encompass God Almighty, but it encompasses you. And that is why you can't know the future, because you are in the dimension of time. You are not going to be able to surpass the physics that was created in this world, and you can't pass it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually the founder of time. Therefore, future and, and the future and history and the past is all like a mirror. It is all clear and transparent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows the future just as much as he knows the past because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not encompassed by time because time is a creature. It is created. And here, وَلَا يُحْيُطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ And nobody is able to encompass anything of what he had taught, the knowledge that he has, إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ Unless he would give you that limited knowledge, إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ Whatever he wills. Why? Because of place look at this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking us the beginning of life the beginning of life and how the beginning of life and it was actually a creature and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond the beginning of life and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the maker of life and then he takes you into well realizing the ownership and what put life together and then takes you into time takes you into time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond time and then takes you into understanding the place. In fact, the place of your Lord Almighty, just his throne is actually beyond. It is beyond even just the Lord Almighty's throne. It is beyond as-samawat wal ard the skies and the earth in order to encompass a place of anything you might think well you've got the time you've got the place you've got the different things surrounding it so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us and preserving the time preserving the place preserving all that all that puts it together in the dynamics of life, so the hifl is in the dynamic of life that put the space, the place of samawat and ard, and the timing that they both together make. He's not incapable of preserving the, the, the different laws that make them together. If he's not capable if he's if he's not if he is capable of putting those two together then he is capable of bringing them in separation and he is capable in putting these two together in making life making life is actually done by al ali al azim al ali the most high 
العظيم the most magnificent no matter how far you want it to go in place and time your lord almighty's name allah will always be there in every single corner to speak in its loudest sound that your lord almighty is behind all those different pieces of place time and what puts them together and what makes them be without you understanding that piece do you really know where you are who you are and where you're heading well that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had actually given man guidance to help man stay away from all the different delusions that they might fall into thinking that they have the answer by using different deluded ways end of our class subhanallah it's it's very important when we speak about islam when we speak about the names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we take a moment to reflect that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the names and attributes and making us read over and over ayat al kursi after every salah because it's a moment for you to reflect that your lord almighty and your lord almighty in, in every single corner of life is actually speaking allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum is speaking the names and attributes of your lord almighty during your weakness during your power during your loss and during that moment where you're able to reach success connect to your lord almighty to get to the inner fulfillment because your lord almighty was the one that filled the world with his with his presence is the one that is nur samawati wal ard the one that is the light of the heavens and and the earth fill yourself with knowing that if he was capable of being the nur samawati wal ard the light of the heavens and the earth then take a moment to fill yourself with dhikr with remembering god almighty allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayy al qayyum read it on and on in order to let that light fill in your heart and fill you with his presence assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i'll be happy to answer any questions all right it seems like no questions All right so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and we'll see you next two weeks inshallah